that's my that's my Le Mans shelf, uh, Ryan. Um, Gus and Ryan, I'm glad you guys came over because I was right in the middle of doing my second Le Mans shelf. That's going to go up up here. I've been planning this for the last six years. Six years ago, I put these lights up. In fact, I'll turn them on. I've had them off because there's nothing to display up here yet. And what I'm going to do is build a diorama of the Ford versus Ferrari starting grid uh, with the lineup. And I hope to build a diorama of the uh, pits in the background. It, it's going to be pretty big. It'll still clear our heads, but it's going to be really long. It's going to go from here all the way to as far as I can reach. Because, of course, I still want to be able to, to, to get the cars. So that way I can display my uh, uh, Ford, Le Mans, Porsche, I mean um, GT40s and the Porsches uh, and the Ferraris that ran in that race. Um, we're still in a mess down here, so um, I'm working sporadically on these, these different projects while my brother and Frank are putting together the, uh, the cards and the system for my lap counter, which I can't help much in, so I've kept busy by building these projects. Let me show you what I intend that shelf to look like, uh, Gus. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you some of my favorite references. So Gus, these are, these are my references that I've collected all my life. Uh, some of these books are, uh, are priceless to me, you know. And you can see I've got all kinds of notes, I've dog-eared things for scenery for the racetrack and for model building. But my go-to books are Paul Parker's Sports Car Racing in Camera 1970 to 79 and the other book, again written by Paul Parker, Sports Car Racing in Camera 1960 to 69. Th these books have such great photographs. Here, uh, Ryan, you can see the starting grid at Le Mans. Now this is 69 or 70 and this is what I'm, I'm intending on recreating. Now without all the fans there the pits in the background are more visible and that's that's something that I, I'm going to shoot for. Uh, not too unlike this picture right here. You can see the background of uh, the pits. I can show you more of that later. Um, I have another picture here uh, let me see. Did it slide out? It did. It's, it's, oh, here it is. It's back here. And this is the same grid years later. You see there's a chaparral. But my, my goal is to get this done on this shelf. But you know what? The shelf's got to be almost 12 feet long. Let me show it to you. This right here is a shelf that I made this summer and without the cars of course it's going to go up in, in that freeze of the basement. And what I intend to do to show you guys today is how I paint the white stripes that were used in the starting grid at Le Mans. Uh, before 1968 the uh, drivers would be across the track and they would run across, jump in the cars and take off. After 1968 they disallowed that because guys were racing for laps without putting on their seat belts. Uh, in fact one GT40 driver crashed, I can't remember his name offhand, uh, within the first, the first lap of the race. And after that, after 1969, they, they stopped that kind of start. But during the Le Mans versus um, Ferrari years, there were white stripes that went across the pit area, and that's what we're going to recreate today. Hopefully I can, I can do that. So I do, I do want to show you a, a template that I made because, have a look at this guys. This is what I want to recreate in the background, right here. And you can see the pits at Le Mans with the car sitting in front of it.
There, you can't see it because the car is hiding it, but there's a wall between the guys in the pits and the car. And this wall is going to set down on the track like that. And in the background, I made a scale silhouette using those books as a reference. You can see my little scale dude over there, you see? This is this man right here. He's 1 32nd scale tall. And these guys are sitting inside the pits just like that. And this whole silhouette is going to fit up like this. So that, that guarantees me that it's going to fit up there. Now it might not fit all the way up. I might have to foreshorten it, but I'll get in as much as I can. The reason I want to show that to you is because I made a template to lay out where these walls are. Now mind you, the walls are at an angle. They're not straight like this. And that was because in 55 there was a terrible pit crash and they wanted the cars to ricochet back off away from away from the pit workers. So they're all sit at an angle. If you look closely, you can see my silhouette. I made that using this template. Oh, let me bring you over here where there's no cars. It's a good idea to make a template like this whenever you need to do, to, to re do repetitive work. Here is how I did it. I set it down like this, flush with the rear edge, and I will show you the silhouette where that wall is going to go. The reason I need to know where that wall is going to go, it's going to go right there, is because I'm going to drill a hole here, I'm going to drill a hole here, and put a pin up through the bottom into the, my styrofoam wall. And we can show you how I turn that styrofoam wall into looking like a cement wall. The cool part is that it has all kinds of French uh, French uh, uh, logos on it all the way down, and you'll look up and right away be able to see that it, that it is Le Mans. Um, but what we're going to do today is paint the white stripes that these cars line up on. So allow me to move these, and I've made another template to do that. And hopefully you guys are going to watch me do the work, and hopefully it works. Uh, you're going to live through it with me and see if this is going to uh, work out for us. What I did is I made a template out of just advertising paper. And I know the stripes are going to start one quarter inch away from the edge of my uh, surface here. So I find the center between the cars, which is this mark right here, and I put the template right over the mark. Can you see the mark again there? Yep. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is lightly type, um, tape this down like this. And the reason I'm not sure it's going to wholeheartedly work is because this has a little bit of a bounce to it. But I'm going to take you to the table where I set my paint up. And I'm going to use uh, the, the cheapy um, acrylic paints. I've already pre-shaken this, so we'll be ready to go. And my acrylic flow aid, which is 3 8 glycerin, 5 8 distilled water. And this keeps it from uh, it keeps the paint from drying too quickly for me to use, and it also helps it flow better than regular distilled water. So what I'm going to do is put some of this distilled water into one of these into one of these uh, little trays. You can pick up this tray for at a dollar store for just a dollar. Uh, it's not a big deal. I'm going to put some white paint in here and. These are what they call stipple brushes. We've talked about this before in a different video. And I need to be careful here because it's such a fine line. I'm not sure what would be better. This brush, I think this brush is out. It's too big. Or this has very, very soft bristles. This brush is made by uh, Army Painter. Master Class Mighty Dry Brush, which... Uh, we've used, uh, my son uses to paint his Warhammer figures. So what I'm going to do is start by taking a little water and wetting this surface down. 
I'm going to get a little paint and I'm going to start to stipple and if it's too thick it's going to run underneath my template. Let's go over to the template now and see where, where it takes us. Okay, so I'm going to put this down here. I've reinforced the track. I've got everything lined up and we're ready to put down the first line. So let's see how I do with this one first, okay? Whoa, Nelly, I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to slide off. Now, we're not going to get it done in one coat. If I push too hard or if I put it on too thick, it'll creep underneath and the template won't do its job. Are you getting that, Gus? Mm -hmm. Can you get that? Yep. So <clears throat> I'm going to continue on until I have no more paint on my brush. I can't put it on too thin, but I can put it on too thick. Now this will dry fast enough that I can probably get another coat. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the medium brush, so I'm going to put the fine brush away for now and continue on. I'm going to pick up paint from where I stippled, as opposed to starting again and wetting my brush too much. So I just touch it to make sure, and if it's too wet, I'll come over here and I'll dry it out. Now, at Le Mans, according to the according to my reference book, the stripes were white. But I was beginning to wonder if I'm wasting my time here and they're not going to show up enough. I could take artistic license, you know, and make them yellow. So let's get ready to give that another coat. Or we can shift it. Let's, let's do that. Let's go ahead and shift it. So this template is made such that I can lift it up. There's my white stripes. And this tracing was where I failed to center it before. I can erase that with a, with a pink pearl eraser. Now, <clears throat> this cut right here helps center me. But I think the best thing to do is to find the mark that I put between the cars set this edge down and lay lay the template down to where that mark shows in the middle that guarantee as a matter of fact look it would have missed it would have missed because nothing's perfect and because of the stacking of tolerances if you're an engineer you know what i'm talking about you can't hit a home run with this so i'm relying on that to center me i'm going to push this down push this down push this down now by now, this has got a little tacky, so I'm going to pick up a little bit here. Just a touch of water. Just a touch. That's a little bit loud, isn't it, guys? Oh, I've got to dry that out. i got to get a rag. A little bit too much. Again, you can put too much, and you'll never do it too lightly. Let's try this. Here we go. I'm going to move my little bat ballast down this way. Now, if you got a new brush, you're going to you're going to see that uh, you're going to lose some bristles. That's no big deal. So this is this is the first coat. This is the first coat, and before um, the airbrush was invented, this is how artists painted many statues and churches and many uh, carousel horses that were painted on carousels. And you can blend this way and control how much paint you're putting down. I'm going to lift that up now and let that dry. What do you guys think? Do you think I should change that to yellow? Or do you guys think white is the original? Uh, comment, like let me know. Because i, I got to give it a second coat. I like white. If uh, we go yellow, I'll just, I'll just put it right over that. So this was a demonstration of how I use a template to make many stripes 
and many areas on, on the racetrack. Uh, there were, um, I'll show you here, this pattern of these tar strips, those were all done with a template just like this and all cut in and painted in just the same way. If you're going to do a repetition, it's a good idea to, to save some of these coupons and ads and uh, things you get in the mail and go ahead and use this template. So, you know, I think what we'll do is, is let me finish this. And when it comes time for me to make this look like a cement painted block, I'll show you how I use um, caulking to do the edges and make it look like uh, cement. And then we'll mount it on here and we'll put the shelf up. All right? Okay, see you next.